and you are live. Thank you. Uh, welcome uh, everyone out in virtual land to the March 21st meeting of the City of Annapolis Maritime Advisory Board. Um, as is my custom, I will go around my screen uh, and uh, introduce or share with you who is here. Uh, Madeline uh, was our CO, CO TV, city, COA TV um, guru, and uh, she was in the upper left hand corner. We have Alan Miller, who's a board member, <coughs> and Beth Bellis, who is the city harbor master, Duncan Hood, a member, Jake Iverson, a regular guest, um, Michael Tomasini, Mike Tomasini, a member. Peter Trogdon member, Debbie Goslin member, Scott Allen member, my goodness, we have lots. Uh, Kimberly Consoli is our um, uh, reporter. Uh, Beth, for some reason, is in two locations. I've already introduced her. And Hope Stewart is uh, a, one of the several staff members who rotate uh, helping us uh, stay abreast of things. So with that, we can move forward. Um, the first order of business, I'm sorry about the forest drive uh, emergency vehicle, um, is the approval of the minutes. We need to approve the minutes from both January and February. Uh, everybody has those minutes. Um, I will first inquire as to whether there were any changes, questions, or other discussion about the January minutes. There being none, I will ask the same question. Is there any questions, discussion, comments about the February minutes? And again, hearing none, um, I will entertain a motion to approve the January and February minutes as presented by our secretary. There you go. Mr. Hood has, a, has moved to uh, approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Tomasini, second. All in favor? Aye. Kimberly, that was uh, unanimous. Uh, Aye. Everybody that was here. Um, so the minutes have been approved. I, I will make one comment about, um, for those of you and several of you who were not able to attend the February meeting, we had a remarkably um, great uh, president, not remarkably great, she does a good job anyway, uh, presentation by Jackie Guild uh, on the status of generally the, the mayor's electric plan, but also the electric ferries. Uh, they're, they're her, it's well summarized in the minutes. And I sent you all some comments uh, that she followed up, but it was a very informative and Jackie was very helpful in um, letting us know where we stood on things. Um, I think it's basically still in the uh, grant, uh, but they've just been awarded the grant and now think to, to get started uh, on an acquisition plan and we'll just see where it goes from there. Um, but the, uh, there, were, there were some concerns about the proposed or the boat that they've been looking at, a 35 foot boat and its ability to maneuver both in the end of, uh, basically along the Burtis dock and also a proposed location at Fifth Street. Um, and um, the board was very helpful in providing some comments to her about that. So uh, with that, we can just start in. Duncan, uh, you want to fill us in on what happened at the county MIAB? Sure. If you guys take a look at your emails, you'll see a link there if you want to follow along. But um, this is the February 27th meeting of the Marine Industry Advisory Board for the county. Uh, county executive had an idea of an event called River Days. Could be more than one, it's still in the formation, but it, the idea would be educational and recreational events for underutilized water access populations in the county. The idea at this point is to have, a, have private boat owners volunteer to take people out on our rivers for some period of time. So that would mean what, two hours, something like that. Uh, They're looking for suggestions for locations. Suggestions would be something like uh, yacht clubs, 
uh, boat ramps. And uh, this is meant to be a festival type uh, organizational thing, with educational and entertainment features. It's just the beginning. They've approached uh, the MIAB for ideas and leads. That's the uh, county exec has approached the uh, MIAB. And uh, so they're throwing it out to anybody who might have some ideas on how to get kids and populations out on the water on a given day. And that's how loose it is at this point. The next one, we had a pretty interesting talk about sea level rise and what people need to be aware of and how dire it can be and will be. We had a, uh, an engineer there, Matt Fleming and Eric Mickelson were there, part of the Resilience Authority of Annapolis and Anne Arundel County. The projections for sea level rise and impact. Um, so they began this whole operation planning for it in 2019, as far as what assets the county might have to bring to bear as this problem got worse and worse. Um, the idea was to put together a policy for infrastructure and land use to address climate resiliency and work with the city plan 2050, 2065, and 2100 were target dates that they've laid out to project sea levels and responses to them. So they really had, they have three main target plan dates. So the idea is to have potential losses, debris and impact. And this report supposedly is to be finalized within a month or so. The county has a grant, this is next one. The county has grant a grant to work in the shady side area to develop a variety of solutions to sea level rise. And there are discussions currently open on dredging projects to create and restore fish and shellfish habitats in the bay. Next one, state is on the hook to provide sea level rise projections this year. Matt Fleming of the Resilience Authority of Annapolis is taking the lead on grants for state and county. So once that uh, report comes in, he will start working on those grants and making them come. He's already working on them. He's, he will make them official, get them out there. Just as a note, sea level rise estimate is two or more feet of sea level rise between 1990 and 2050. In the past 100 years, we've had a rise of about one and a half feet. And the estimate is as dire as it could possibly get up to six feet since 1990 by the year 2100. If you'll take a look at the sheet I sent you, there is a link there to track that sea level rise. Joe Porter also uh, visited us from the Economic Development Corporation of Anne Arundel County and the city of Annapolis, no stranger to us. And because we had these guests, we pretty much tabled her discussion and thanked her for her time. And then finally, uh, National Engineers Week in Baltimore, which is a big event <laughs> for engineers and kids interested in math and engineering, um, also spilled over into MyTags. MyTags, you may know, is the uh, training facility for professional merchant mariners up in Linthicum near the airport. And they had uh, something like 150 kids in. Their crown jewel, as they say, is their simulator. They have two of the most sophisticated and largest simulators in the world. And I will tell you, having been there and gotten seasick on them, I know exactly how good they are. <laughs> uh, so they had five different schools visiting. Everybody had a great day, great time. They um, this year are looking for funding for lunches. Oops, they're looking for funding and lunches for transportation for next year. 
A report on the boat show from Mary Ewenson. Spring boat shows look very good and they're very well um, populated with vendors at this point. And there you go. Their next meeting is March 27th. We're talking about ferries and waterway improvement funds. How's that for a thumbnail? That's uh, that that's that's two thumbnails. <laughs> the, uh, and that's I, a handful. And I will be participating. Uh, I'm the I'm on the uh, hook is not the right word, but I'm on the on the list for attending the next Monday's uh, session, and it'll be interesting to hear their take on ferries as opposed to whether or Jackie's going to present uh, at that meeting too. Yeah, so, you bet. Mm. Thank you, Duncan. Uh, yeah. Next item on the agenda is just an economic development update. Um, I guess hope that you have anything uh, to share. And at the same time, you can probably talk about where we are with the Maritime Task Force annual reports. Okay. Um, I can't speak on the Maritime Task Force annual reports because I wasn't part of the Maritime Task Force. So I can ask Steve to follow up with that. That'd be great. Uh, as for economic development, uh, speaking of Anne Arundel Economic Development Corporation, they have a new president and CEO. Her name's Amy Gowan, and she is coming from Howard County. She was a director of planning and zoning, and her first day will be April 17th. So if you, you might meet her at some of the county's um, maritime board meetings. We are currently working on seasonal parklets. They will take place again this year, but we are waiting for some guidance from the mayor's office before we proceed. Um, Steve spoke today on a panel uh, hosted by the Baltimore Business Journal, and a lot of the interest was on the city dock and the rebuilding of the Hillman Garage. And also BGE has reopened their small business grants Eligible businesses in the BGE service area can apply for grants of up to $20,000. So those are available if you um, look up Energizing Small Businesses in BGE. And then for economic gardening, for anybody who had watched, there was a update at the last Economic Matters Committee on January 30th, and um, our Consultants are currently in the evaluation phase, going over the work that they did with our different businesses. All right, thank you. Any uh, any questions for Hope? Uh, is somebody going to tell us how far along the Hillman Garage is at this point? Do we have my, any info? My understanding, it's actually ahead of schedule. Yeah, it looks so, great. Yeah because we had a pretty mild winter so that we didn't have any major construction delays. So what is the schedule that it's ahead of? Um, I, I can't exactly speak to it because I'm not part of the, you know, the group that's building it, but it's my understanding that it should be finished by summer. So, uh, but don't we, hold me to that. In to that case. Point, I think the schedule was sometime in the latter part of June or early July. Uh, when I last uh, spoke with Eileen Fogarty, who's sort of been the, the, the coordinator of schedules, et cetera. Um, and the, uh, ironically, the long lead, the one lead time item that might not be completed is the elevator. Um, they have trouble getting lead time with the elevator. I, don't, I haven't heard lately whether or not they've been able to ex uh, accelerate the elevator or yeah. not, but uh, uh, I think that from when I talked with Eileen before, the plan was to go ahead and open the garage, even if get, uh, you know, have basically a temporary use and occupancy, be able to get the garage open without the elevator. Uh, and then as soon as the elevator is available, get it installed, although the, the infrastructure board is already there. But uh, that I think was the only lead item that would impact full and complete completion uh, by June or July, but that was the time frame um, for it. That's very exciting. Yeah, it should be. I, uh, and then I, I, then the plan, I believe, is to once that is done, uh, they've been working diligently with architects and planners and people uh, on rolling right into the renovations or the, 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 the changes to City Dock because that all tied to the um, 
availability of the garage before you start taking parking off of city dock. So Debbie, I don't know if you or Jake have any more update on that aspect of it, but um, I know the architects have, and BG&E and others have been working diligently on uh, their plans um, and and thought that that's, I haven't heard, I haven't I, had a I understand that they are going to start right after this year's boat show. Um, Peter and Jake may know more than that. Okay. Peter, any any update on that? Uh, yeah, that's the that's the news I have heard as well. That the if if the city gets the I think that I believe the final piece of funding is from FEMA, and they need to get their uh, application and their design submitted to FEMA um, soon, so they can um, they can apply for that piece of funding. And then they would like to uh, to start the the renovation of 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 uh, city dock um, after the October shows, and um, so I think I think there's a lot of stakeholders and a lot of moving parts, but um, that's that's uh, what I understand. So um, that actually raises a. And, and that that timing makes sense to not start until uh, that gives them a little bit of extra time to get the garage done and uh, and then accommodate the boat shows and then and then start on the on the city dock. Um, Terry, do you think that we could get someone from the design team to present to us and show us what where we are on that? Because... I, just, I was making a, uh, a note of that, a mental note of that, and I'll scribble that down. Um, and see if I, I'll talk, reach out to Eileen Fogarty and see if we can uh, get somebody to present, uh, give us a, a more detailed update at the next at the next meeting. And Scott, I see your hand up, but let me just follow up with one thing with Peter first. Um, Peter, I mean, obviously there is a great amount of um, uh, coordination in terms of design of what happens at City Dock with how it impacts the layout of the boat shows um, once the city dock program is implemented. Um, any update on are there are there any major hiccups in being able to do that, or is that just a question of working out how to how to work around a bench or how to work around a potted plant that's moved or whatever? Terry, I, I would first say that you're very perceptive in your questioning there about that topic. Um, there, it's very complicated. Um, and we've been work. my team has been working with the city designers to figure out how to um, maintain all the, the tented space and the non-tented space um, with the new design. And um, we're meeting with them um, to try to try to sort this out. They're, they're, um, they presented designs to us and we've, we're replying with, uh, with our issues. So I think we're right in the middle of, of trying, to, um, trying to get some, uh, some changes implemented that'll allow us to, to uh, flat hard surfaces where we can put tents down and, or park uh, boats and, and engines outside on open spaces. Um, so you know, we're, we're, uh, we're in the middle of that uh, as we speak. There's, a, there's a, a lot of effort going on right now. And I assume that is just basically one-on-one -on -one with the architect and the engineers that are, um, and I mean, it's, not, it's the devil is gonna be in the details, obviously. That's right, yeah. And, and to Jake, are they working with you, uh, talking to you about how to um, make sure that the operation is maintained throughout the construction? We have been in, in, in communication. Um, we've talked about potentially moving uh, the operations over to the uh, Burdestock area if we were unable to use the space, uh, our lease space. Um, and signage and access to the promenade um, the decking isn't supposed to be 
uh, taken up or anything. So we should have access all the way around Susan Campbell Park, at least um, that's what we believe right now. Um, the, the buses was a big issue. We've gone back and forth about where the buses are going to pull up. Um, a lot of our um, group tours are, are have mobility issues. So it's very important that we get them as close to the boat um, as possible, um, as well as American Cruise Lines. When they come in town, their tenders pull up for the charter dock um, and they need to get um, to a bus or whatever mode of transportation. So we are in communication. Um, it's been decent communication. Is the Naval Academy involved in that conversation too? Because I know they use City Dock for bus drop off as well. They do, and I it hasn't been with me. Gotcha. So let me make a couple of notes. Uh, Uh, I will endeavor to get um, Eileen and one of the architectural members um, available for our next meeting um, because I think that that we're, we seem to be, it sounds like we're getting to the stage of nuts and bolts. And um, as I said a few minutes ago, the devil will be in the details. So to the extent that we can assist on either side of the competing uh, docks, competing competitors for dock space, um, we, we we should be able to, we, we should at least be uh, apprised of what's happening or what the issues are so we can uh, offer any input that we might have. So I'll endeavor to get uh, Eileen and uh, uh, like, like I said, I'm one of the architects to uh, to come to the next meeting. If there is uh, some urgency uh, between now and then, either Jake or Peter, if you want to reach out, that's fine. Um, I do have some communication, line of communication uh, with Eileen from time to time, um, as I think Debbie may also, um, Mike. Um, so we can, you know, See, hopefully see where things are. I'm not sure that we can be in a position to advocate for any one particular position, but certainly we can see what we can do to provide some in, insider input into it. Um, anybody have, uh, Scott, you had a question. I had almost the exact same question as you did, um, Terry, uh, as far as the economics of the businesses, boat show and, and uh, watermark. Uh, or others on the city dock and how this new plan will affect it both in the process of building and that, I mean I, I read the article in the paper about it they're going to take all the tarmac out and put grass and that's like the first thing you think about Peter with the boat shows and you put the boat show on grass and and put the boats exhibits on grass is that going to work and then also with the the economics of the uh, watermark and buses things like that so it seems to me the maritime advisory board ought to have a pretty good understanding of what's going to happen from a planning standpoint and also make recommendations um, that are needed. But we as a board are trying to help and protect the Maritime Advisory Board businesses out there. So we should take a look at it and, and uh, see that it doesn't hurt the business aspect of the maritime industry here. So, uh, Jake, let me back up uh, because I saw... Uh, a couple of months ago, if, if my recollection is of the, I'll call it the big, the, the 40,000 foot view, is that the Harbor Master office will be removed. There'll be a maritime center of some sort, uh, somewhat adjacent to the, um, the Burtis House. The Harbor Master will relocate into the Burtis House, second floor. Or, or the other building, but there'll be a little complex of buildings, including the Burtis House and a, and a maritime, little maritime building uh, down by the Burtis House. And that the bus parking in particular would look like it was going to be placed essentially in the area where the harbor current harbor master office is, or maybe a little bit 
uh, more inland from that, but that's the general area with the ability to come pull in straight ahead without a lot of backing and filling. Is that what you've been seeing? That's correct. The the new addition that I've seen is they pull in right in front of the Harbor Master's office. Either we can fit two to three buses right there and they can drop off and then make that U-turn to go uh, back out by Mission Barbecue. Um, the other plan was to have directional parking. Um, so take out that median where um, the parking meters are now right in front of uh, some of those shops and uh, what is it, Moe's and uh, the coffee shop there. Take out the median so that you can have uh, two and a half spaces for a bus to park. The only issue there is how do they make the turn to get out? So uh, they're trying to work through it, but that's all we have. Okay. Well, that was the last, that was uh, the iteration that I last saw was essentially that area, which is pretty much where the only place you can bring a bus in and out. <clears throat> sure. Yeah, and the other thing is possibly having some parking that um, for buses that uh, it's drop off and pick up during this these hours of the day. Um, so we're, we're working through that. Okay. All right. Um, everybody have any other questions on on uh, on that topic? Um, everybody has a copy as of a couple hours ago, three hours ago, of the summary that uh, Beth sent around regarding the status of the Sweden Park upgrades. And then the last item on there was the status of uh, the of commercial leases. Um, I Beth, I had one question um, uh, and it had to do with the third bullet point, which was Sixth Street. Um, you indicate that the waterway improvement grant is set to expire, uh, although Public Works has asked for an extension. But it sounds like that particular project is, I won't call it behind schedule, but it's, we've been talking about that project going on two years and we're only uh, at the design and, uh, and design and permitting have not been bid out yet. What's, what's the delay with Sixth Street? I mean, that's a, that, that's been on the books for a long time. Can everyone hear me? Yes, so we can both. So I, so I think to be completely transparent, I think uh, the largest part of the delay has been that we have been reassigned an engineer. But it's not really public works fault, but we've been reassigned engineers because there's been so much turnover in public works. So I think that I think that Betsy um, McCann was making good progress. And then they turned it over to Michael Rosberg, and then they turned it over to uh, Burr, um, Bob, Burr Vogel. And so there's been so many reassignments to this project. Uh, and to be perfectly honest, this was Brian Snyder did the um, request for what do we call that RFP. He did that request for bids. I don't remember what the correct terminology is in 2020. So we are way, way, way behind schedule on this project. And bottom line is we just don't have enough engineers for the project. So if you look at the long list of waterfront projects, and when you think about all the other things that DPW is doing, especially um, waterfront projects, I just don't think there's enough employees to handle all of this. That's my take, but I don't work for DPW, but that's how it feels to me. Yeah. So the thing that comes to mind with that particular location is that there is a limited amount of access from Back Creek for boaters who are anchored uh, in Back Creek or are on the far side and want to dinghy across. And you know, I couldn't agree more. Um, and it would seem to me that there should be some priority on getting a viable Sixth Street landing um, for uh, for that access, rather than rehabbing, you know, streets that already have been upgraded once before, 
back uh, in 2005, six, seven timeframe. Um, and now we're, we're revisiting those at um, some of the other streets on Spa Creek, but we are not paying attention to uh, the access off of Back Creek. So I uh, couldn't agree more, and I definitely convey this sentiment to Mr. Vogel. Um, anybody have any 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 thoughts on that? Uh, because my inclination is is to perhaps express concern to um, the council and our uh, and public works that this particular project should be moved up on the pecking order and not just be a stepchild to some of these other projects. Yeah, I would agree with you on that one, uh, Terry. And you're absolutely right. We've got a lot of transients who anchor in uh, in Back Creek and they all want access. And they're either gonna land at Watergate and walk in or they're gonna land at Sixth Street. So there you go. I mean, furthermore, I would say even when I go to take calls for service in Back Creek, I can't find a place to pick up a policeman or a firefighter unless I go to a private marina and they're running down the docks. So I couldn't agree more that this should be a priority project. Yeah. All right. I'll uh, I'll follow up with a letter from the board. Uh, Scott, go ahead. Same thing. If we can find the, the pressure points that Beth has described, we, we do report to the mayor, maybe one to the mayor, council, and public works directly. I think that's one of the things the Maritime Advisory Board can do and um, could be helpful. And I think we should note the economics for the city of the people on the boats that are going to come ashore are probably going to come into downtown or at least in Eastport and drop some funds shopping around. So I think it's an economic thing as well. I don't know if Hope can get in on that or not, but. Um, so there's three or four points that are be addressed here to the, to the right people. And that's one of the good things about the Maritime Advisory Board, what it can do. I will, uh, as usual, circulate if we have a, um, I'll put together a draft the next week or so and circulate it for comments and thoughts and input. Um, and uh, we'll see if we can get that out before the next meeting. Beth, That'd be great. The second question I had was, there's a reference to the a new dock at the base of Spa Creek. And I don't know what you mean, where, where is the base of Spa Creek? So the mayor has come up with an idea that he's very excited about to put in a new dock, um, not adjacent to the St. Mary's property on the Annapolis side of Spa Creek that he wants to have like steps and like a landing. You're, you're talking about like in St. Mary's Cove there? Well, yes, but uh, we haven't done the property surveys, but ideally like there is a piece of the property that we don't know whose property belongs to whom yet, but essentially like it, it would be maybe sandwiched between St. Mary's and State Highway or maybe a State Highway property who, who knows whose property it is? But the idea is that it would provide a new landing for entry and egress to Spa Creek. Right there at the bridge you're talking about. Yes. Right, right at the bottom at Duke of Gloucester and Compromise Street. Yes. And mm -hmm. they did pitch this idea to Department of Natural Resources who, are, who could be grant towards for a project. And they did say that they liked the idea. Like they might be willing to give grant money for such a project. Sure. How would you access the dock, floating dock from the street? Because it's quite a descent there. That, I mean, well, it would be a platform and a set of steps as well. And um, definitely before Lisa Greco left the Department of Public Works, she indicated that there are a lot of traffic and parking issues that may not be insurmountable. They, they might be insurmountable. Because there's no place to park and there's no place to stop and drop off. So that was Lisa. And I really I, th I really think that Lisa is an impeccable engineer. And I thought her comments were noteworthy. And I don't know that we'll be able to overcome those problems. 
we just to get a probably a compliant uh accessible com accessible and compliant ramp or some type of access from the floating dock up to duke of gloucester street or that corner uh is going to probably be you know it'll be it'll be more than 10 feet long uh, and have to stretch quite a ways to be able to to get up there yeah and you're, you're not wrong. Seeing mary's properties yeah i mean so that well that that's and, and again it goes back a little bit to we're putting another access point We've got two dinghy docks downtown, and now we're putting another access point on Spa Creek, and we're not addressing the access uh, from Back Creek. So, right, just another goes goes to the same point we just talked. Isn't that also the location where the Bryce House found that the sand is perfect for the mortar for the bricks in the Bryce House? That's the first I've heard of that. I think that's what I was told when they were um, when I was given a construction tour of the Bryce House. I mean, I definitely understand the I definitely understand the attraction of the idea, but there there are plenty of challenges. So last but not least, on your report, uh, and I think I had seen this somewhere else, but the. Uh, there, there are now offers for uh, leases for various commercial vessels uh, in the Burtis Basin uh, up to a maximum of two weeks per month. Is that what I'm reading? That's right. April through August. Yes. Have there been what? What is the status of that? Are there applications have been applications for leases have been submitted? Or so there are two draft leases for two different companies that are slated to go before council on May 27th, Mar March 27th, I apologize. And there are four leases that started in April, so I'm not sure exactly how those can get passed. Um, two different companies. I think we are at the place where the city and the parties have agreed on the terms, but the city so the city council has to approve the lease. So we will see what happens next. So are they are they each for two weeks each? So they're for two weeks per month, April, May, June, July, August. No, but so I mean, weeks. the two that are pending, are they for each each of them for the full two weeks or are they a shorter term? So they're for two weeks for five months, so 10 weeks total. So for two weeks each month, April, May, June, July, August. So total ten weeks. And who so are the, two months per two weeks, weeks per month? To who are those applicants? Uh, one is the Lee, and one is CTA uh, Trading Ads. Gosh, I can't remember the name. Um, DTA Pedal Boat. It's a thirty foot pedal boat, and then one is the Lee. You're uh, you're echoing. So I so what? Who was the first one? Wilma Lee, I think she said. Wilma Lee, okay. Yeah, Wilma Lee is one, which is the uh, Annapolis Maritime Museum. Right. Yeah. And the second one is um, they call themselves DTA, meaning Downtown Annapolis Pedal Boat. He has a different trading as name, but I can't remember it at the moment. Kind of every thought to have pedal boats down there with all that boat traffic. Yeah. So you may have seen a news article that came out two or three days ago about the Sipa boy who just um, managed to get a lease over one ten compromise, and it's causing quite a stir in the commercial industry because um, it doesn't. The article doesn't indicate where he got his lease, so everyone's assuming he got a lease with the city, but he did not. So my phones have been blowing up saying, wait, what? How did this happen? Um, but yeah. the city had nothing to do with the city of Hawaii lease. However, the city is amenable to these other, what, this, what the mayor is calling a pilot lease. Essentially, he uh, sent to the city a thing like, we would like to see if and how this could be successful. So we would like to have like sort of a test 
for all these different businesses to come in for shorter periods of time and see what happens. And would these two leases fully occupy the Furness Basin and preclude anybody else coming in? No. So um, um, the, the plan is that if DCA, the pedal of the 30 footer, gets a lease, they'll probably be in the DNR dock, which is largely unused, which is the dock that is adjacent to the Naval Academy. And the Wilma Lee will move back and forth on the Verda stock, as is um, obviously um, preferable for the city, if I can say that. So like Sunday night through Friday morning, they may be on the park side, but Friday afternoon until Sunday afternoon, they have to be on the Navy side. So essentially giving them the visibility that they want, but allowing us to have the ability to host Super Yacht and the Pride and the larger nonprofits and also like uh, Tagalog Ramp. So we're essentially trying to keep as many groups happy as possible while making it at least as attractive to AMM. Are they paying market? Are they paying market rent? So we, so what we did was we took the amount of money we made on the charter rocket an entire year, and they're taking up seventy-five of ninety-five feet for half the time because they only get ten weeks out of twenty productive weeks, and that's how we calculated their rent. So the rent is around. It's close to 15000 for 10 weeks, plus they have to pay for um, trash and electric. So we try to, you know, follow the city code and make sure that we charge full fees to the best of our ability. I, I, those are being introduced by way of a resolution? So they're coming in as a lease with an ordinance. Should be an yeah. ordinance. Right. So okay. it's an ordinance with a lease that will come in on May 27th, but it would have to be passed in order for them to come in right on April 7th. And the other lease starts on March 31st. So I am told that the city council would have to suspend the rules. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know that this could happen. But I think it's going to be a rush job. If the city could have pulled it off, it would be um, surprising. Leases shouldn't be rushed. All right. Uh... All right. Um... Anybody else have any questions, comments on that? I made a note to follow up with. Ross on that legislation and just see where it stands. I had not seen it. So um, I will follow up with Ross uh, tomorrow um, and see what uh, hit, what we... What uh, Mike has his hand up. I'm sorry. Uh, hello, Mike. That's all right. All right. So Beth, two questions. I'm, I'm going to guess that these are being sold as pilots or, or presented as pilots because City Dock is going to go under construction in less than nine months. Yeah, so that's definitely the getting factor. So the so the leases are are temporary, probably through the what the end of September is. So no one's going to get any rentals in September. Um, it. it will only be April through August. Got it. And then to the the DNR boats are actually fairly active at that DNR dock. Where where are they going to dock when when they're coming in? And so they're right in the entry. So that's active the city dock. So they're right in the entry is only the last fifty feet. Got it. And they actually haven't had a boat there since boat show last year. Got it. So I think we're okay there. So when they do come in, they have access to that first fifty dot fifty feet of dock creek. They do. Yeah, they do. All right. Got it. All right. That's, those are mine. Uh, anybody else? All right. Um, 
Is there any update on our elusive electric current at uh, Truxton to just keep it on the agenda? It's a, uh, it seems to be nobody, no, it seems to be a lot of picker, pointing like this. Um, so you want me to weigh in, I will. Um, so what I can tell you is there's still a significant amount of current in the water. And the thinking, I'm sure I've already told this board this, but um, just to review, the thinking, the, the pervasive um, advice is you shouldn't swim near any marina ever. You shouldn't swim near docks and you shouldn't swim near boats. And this is new information. Like we weren't told this 10 years ago or even probably five years ago. But if you go on the site electric shop, drowning.org, you will read all of the our stories and the concerns. So, so I've I've sent the PowerPoint up to the experts, to the um, administration, and I'm waiting for the legal team to opine. Um, so I don't think that the I don't think it's going to change that you, you shouldn't swim there. That's I don't think that's going to change. You shouldn't swim at Charleston. What what I think everyone's waiting for is, but could we launch a kayak? And could we launch a stand up paddle board? And I think the thinking is, well, a stand-up paddleboard and a kayak are sort of designed where you could likely fall in the water. So how much liability does it is it to be willing to absorb? And that answer hasn't been decided on yet. So the upshot, again, you're you're echoing quite a bit, but the, I assume the upshot is that if there's going to be no swimming, it is paddle boards may also not be the right thing to launch there? Yeah, I think the lawyers may decide that. Just judging from the paddle boarders on Back Creek, they may not swim, but they do fall in the water. <laughs> Terry, I have a question for, for Beth. Okay. On my screen, I see uh, Beth's name on a black, no video. And then at, the, at another place on the screen, I see her name a, a second time. Is it possible that, that Beth's logged in with two devices? I definitely yeah. only have one device. Because yeah. my, str my struggle is I'm, at, I'm really having a hard time understanding anything Beth's saying. Does right. anybody else hear that echo? Yeah, absolutely. That's why I so so Beth, why or maybe I should ask um uh Madeline, why how how is how does Beth log in twice? With two different devices. So Beth, there must be you must be logged in with two devices, which is why you're getting that echo, because if I have two people logged in nearby each other you get that you get that echo no i, I promise you only have one device i don't know why i have two screens i did log in early and try to um trouble through these problems with madeline and i have not found a solution i apologize so, so, so well what i can do is remove the other yeah, device say, um you, uh, which might help can okay you just removed her uh the the one that wasn't active that what didn't seem to be active all right, now, Beth, say something. Am I, is my email kind of gone? No, it didn't help. <laughs> so, all right, maybe you can work with uh, uh, Madeline or the COA TV and see how, and just experiment around as to what, which device works the best uh, that does. I'll try. I found, I've tried three computers an hour before this meeting. So I really apologize. Yeah, well, it's it's it, it just makes it very difficult as as Peter pointed out and I pointed out that not to not to you know that you that it's echoing so much. Um and I is it, I assume that there's no change in the city dock lease um uh parameters that were in place. I think the last time we met and talked about this um there weren't a whole lot of negative comments about how it was working and we were going to stay the course at the moment so i assume that, that that's what's happening we haven't made it 
there's been no changes in the city dock uh, lease requirement, lease parameters in terms of the charter dock. I, when I say city dock, I'm talking about the charter dock. Um, there's been no change in the city's perspective. All right. So the, the, the charter dock policy is, the, is basically the same as it was last year. Yes. Okay. I guess that was the easy way to ask the question. All right, Alan, I take it there has or has there been any, or you and Scott, has there been any uh hey Terry Ellen ever get back to you? I got you, Mike. Terry, mm -hmm. yeah, before we move on to, to Alan, can who are is the city working with some kind of electrical expert to, to solve that problem at Truxton Park or try and or try and locate the source of the of the stray current? Or... As far as I'm aware, they're working with the city's electrician, who may or may not be an expert when it comes to marine electronics. And they're also working with BGE. Got it. Um, I have referred them to another expert um, who got on a call to talk to the city manager at all and present all the other concerns, but as far as I know, they haven't hired an expert in that realm, which is what I would recommend based on what I've learned. Got it. Because yeah, there's just not a lot of, I mean, compared to outer Spock Creek, where there are tons of docks and tons of boats that, that are that are dropping zinks into the water and, and, and all kinds of old wiring there, you would think that the, the stray electric current is coming from a, a fairly major source. There's just not a lot of docked boats and and infrastructure back there where this would be more prevalent there than any place else. It might be that people are not testing it. And the only reason we tested it is way higher. I'm going to put you on mute for just a minute while I... What do you think, Alan? There's I think I'd like to get. There's got to be some kind of sensor that that picks up underwater current and and finds it where it's strongest, right? Uh, sort of, but you can't clamp a column of water, which makes it hard. But you right. can dip for it, as I understand it. I I would like to get Bob Campbell or Patrick Tuis down there and just next time they're in the school teaching, I'm just going to ask them if they if they know about it and has anybody asked those two to walk down there because those are two of the best in in Annapolis. You know, Alan, that's an excellent idea. Yeah, because I was looking and there there are a few products out there that are actually designed for marinas that have like these kind of wading beaches where they put this uh, buoy into the water and, and, and the buoy lights up like a voltage tester in your home. Like it, 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 if it's wow. red, you, you don't wade. And if it's if it's green, there's there's no electrical current. I got to imagine that that there's some professional within a wade. <laughs> So the experts that I've spoken to have said this is a terrible idea. So I wouldn't also mind connecting the group with this other gentleman that spoke at my conference recently, Good. Um, who seems to be the leading person. I wouldn't mind linking everyone up with him, but he's consulted, so he might cost some money. Right. Well, like Alan said, we've got some some pretty substantial experts here in in the city who might be able to at least help. Yeah, absolutely. Is, is there enough current to hurt someone? I don't know anybody knows that just yet. Well, it doesn't go far enough out towards Truxton Point there at Truxton because after this, I mean, this has been going on for a year now and just anecdotally going up Spa Creek um, there are kids wading in the water right off the point of Truxton there at the, at the intersect, at the point that comes out, uh, where Spock Creek continues, um, yeah. on up to its headwaters and the, I mean, they're off into, into the cove, what's that, Wells Cove, I guess, is it Wells, no, is, is it Hawkins Cove, but anyway, you go off in, towards Truxton Park, um, so at least it's not spreading out to there, um, at this point, 
It certainly impacts public access to the water in a number of different ways. I think that the water taxi is still not allowed to land there because of the current, and plus the paddle boarders and anybody else. Yeah. I don't see why the taxi can land there, but I would encourage everybody to visit electricshockdrowning.org and read the current, um, the current um, kind of advice. It seems to me that the city has a huge liability here that no one's doing anything about, or at least not enough, because the city knows all about this. And if someone dies there and the city's sitting there know, knows all this, they're going to sue the city. I mean, I, I've sent the emails and the PowerPoints and the advice, and I take my direction from above. Yeah, I know. I know. But um, it seems like uh, maybe maybe this group ought to push hard on this topic because that's public safety. There ought to be a way to solve this. I think I think that's a good idea, Peter. I, I would concur. And um, further, if we know about this issue along with the city, and we represent the city, then the liability comes all the way down, not that necessarily directly, but it, that trickle down so we all know about it we need to be careful too so i don't know if there's warden director's insurance floating around here for us or not but we fall under city uh, governmental immunity yeah right. but right. I think and then scott i mean the, on to your point it, i'm i'm trying to remember just how long ago it was but the we did have a like a, a really kind of weird drowning in the city at the end of Chesapeake Avenue, do you, does anybody remember this? It was, I think it was Labor Day, maybe 10 years ago. It was a family at the end of Chesapeake on the beach. Yeah. And an accomplished swimmer went into the water and then just never resurfaced. It wasn't a, it wasn't a diving. It wasn't, and it's right next to that, to a marina where there, where there could be stray electric current. It, and, so if you look at this website, what they will tell you is that most of these drownings are actually electric shock drownings, but people don't know it because there's no evidence at the autopsy. Right. So the strong swimmers go in the water, they get shocked, their muscles seize up, they sink, they breathe in water, so it's a drowning, and there's no evidence on an autopsy, and so we don't know this. And so they've done enough studies to say, you know what, this is happening often, and anytime there's three or more electrical outlets at a marina, that's a no swim zone. And around boats and around docks, that's a no swim zone. And this is like well known in freshwater, but obviously freshwater is much more dangerous than salt water. And brackish water is the unknown, which is why the information hasn't been pushed out strongly. But we all know when there's lots of rain in the upper reaches of our brackish water, it's largely fresh. Yeah. I agree with Peter that the uh, city has a liability here. So I think we can advise the city. Gary, maybe with a letter. I'm not sure where you start, but you know better than all of us as a lawyer. So not necessarily, but <laughs> I, I will say they um, just on an anecdotal basis, there is a stretch of the Illinois River. Uh, before you get to Chicago, it's about a half mile long that is deliberately electrified. That's right. I remember it. They have great big yellow warning signs about don't swim, don't you know, do this, don't do that. And it's deliberately electrified to keep out the Asian carp from coming up the Mississippi and up the Illinois and getting into the Great Lakes. And it's literally a half mile or so long um and it is affirmatively electrified yeah and it seems to be fairly effective yeah carp don't carp stay away um all right segueing i'll i made a note of that also um and now segueing back to the maritime hall of fame um issue or question about uh, the maryland maritime Hall of Fame, has there been any contact from uh, Ellen Moyer on that topic? 
I've heard nothing. Alan, have you heard anything? So I requested from Fort Bragg the company bid list, the drawing list, and everything last month. Kind of hope to have it. Um, then I found out it's all paper copy from 2009. So I'm going down there at the end of the month uh, for another meeting, and I'm going to swing by the Army Corps of Engineers office and, uh, and just see if they'll let me go in there and take some copies or at least take a look at it. So at least I could show you what we did, and we can get some realistic price or semi-realistic price on it, see if it's worth pursuing. Great, Alan. That's great. Very good. Um, all right. That brings us to new business. I have not discussed uh, with Scott, because I frankly I thought you were out of town, but you're not. Um, the election of a chair and vice chair. I have been, I, I certainly do not take umbrage if someone wants to nominate somebody else. Or, uh, and Scott, I don't know what your thoughts are. I'm putting you on the spot as to whether you want to run or not run. And if you don't, uh, what I would probably do is defer this to next the next meeting, um, if you want to just reach out to me, you and I can talk after the meeting at some point before the next meeting and we just defer it. And if anybody's got any more thoughts on the aspiration for bigger and better things and want to run, please let me know. <laughs> well, Terry, one of the problems of doing a good job is that you got to keep doing it. <laughs> Well, I'm trying not to do a good job, you know. It's just, you know, if if I knew that was a criteria, I could uh, I could have started laying that groundwork 12 months ago. <laughs> but um, obviously, the silence is deafening as to uh, what we want to do. Scott, you and I can talk when we're yeah, we can talk, sure. At the sometime between now and the next meeting, and we will def. Kimberly, just make a note that, that that issue was deferred. I know we were supposed to have done it in January, but um, um, it's not going to make or break the, uh, the work of the committee. Um, and that was it. The other items have been deferred. Um, uh, anybody will actually just go around. Uh, Alan, anything else for the good of the cause? No other than I may have waited at Truxton Park a few times to get a boat in and out. <laughs> and you're, oh, so yeah. you're the electrical tester. Yeah, there you go. Did you, you know, did you just have to hold a light bulb in your hand to see if it lights up? <laughs> that Peter, would be very enlightened. Anything else, Peter? No, uh, I have no other comments. Debbie? Nope, thank you. Except up. I nominate you for chairman, Terry. <laughs> I second the nomination. Here, here. You, don't need, you don't need a vote yet. Uh, Frida. I, I just have one thing. I want to make sure that those of you who uh, were here and uh, celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Whitbread stopover and Chessie, honoring Chessie Racing. I don't know if you already <laughs> talked about it, but... Um, I'm, I'm so excited. I think it's going to be awesome April 21st at AYC. So I've uh, been trying to help uh, round up a few people who were here back back then working on stuff with me. So that's very exciting. Hope everybody can make it. Yeah, it's uh, Friday, April 21st, 6, to, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And what you said was at AYC? Yes. And uh, Gary Johnson's going to do a video presentation and Dave Gendell will be the master of ceremonies. Right. I, I, uh, there was a, I was just remembering, I saw, uh, looking to see, I think it must have come in my email because I, I actually did print it out to remember to make that comment. And as soon as you started uh, saying you had a, had something, I'm like, okay, I remember it's here. <laughs> I'll search. I'll be old enough to remember the date, Frida, but can you remind me? April, yeah. 20, April 21st. No, no, the year of the Whitbread. Oh, it was the 25th anniversary. So what was that? Oh, oh gee. 97, 98, was it? Oh, geez, so, yeah. It's been a bit. Not, but it would have been 98. 98. Yeah. I think it was when I first came out of the police academy in for natural resources police. I think it was my first special event. That's a lot. Well, <laughs> you can tell how old it is because it's, it's the Whitbread and not the Volvo. Yeah, yeah. I think that was actually close to the last year. It was a Whitbread too. It, be, 
it, it transitioned to Volvo shortly thereafter. The second stop, uh -huh. Volvo stop. I, I think I have this. I think this came in an email. I'll, I'm going to lay it right on top of my keyboard and circulate it. Uh, Mike, anything else? Just wondering, uh, Terry, are there vacant board positions right now? There are, and um, that's a good reminder for anybody out there listening in radio land. Um, the process is that we do not select board members. Um, it is done by the boards and commissioners um, coordinator, Hillary uh, Raptovich, who basically coordinates it, and they're appointed by the city council. And you have to go online and find get the form to submit. And it's the same form, I believe, for all boards and commissions. But you fill out the form, uh, submit your interest to Hillary, uh, and then uh, sometimes it gets acted on and sometimes it doesn't. Um, <laughs> we, have, we do have, I believe, at least one vacancy uh, regular member vacancy. Um, and Alan, I think you were the last person to be appointed on a regular basis. And there was still another, at least one other vacancy. So the answer to that question is yeah. yes, but don't call me. I don't have any, I don't have any pull on that. Is Andy still on the board or is he off now? He's a desig, he's a ward one designee. Okay. So as long as uh, Hillary, is, I'm sorry, as long as uh, um, Ellie is, uh, keeps him appointed, then he remains as the designee. He uh, was in the Bahamas this month, I think. Uh, Duncan, anything else? I'm good, thank you. Scott? Uh, two things, one on, on the board membership, the, the Maritime Advisory Board has always had good input I guess to Hillary or to the city when there's an opening. So I think we, if we can kind of keep an eye on that, we don't have to force it, but we might be able to give good suggestions if needed when the time comes. And and the other quick one was on Frida, Frida's um, uh, notation there. Do you think it's worthwhile? And maybe the city is doing it, but having a resolution from city council for Chessy Racing for the 25th anniversary? I think that's a wonderful idea, Scott. Maybe I, I like I like that. So it seems to me that uh, there's a lot to be resolved, not resolved, but whatever resolution does. But uh, oh, okay. celebrate so, that anniversary would be good, and and maybe we can write a letter. I'm not sure who would do that. Uh, Terry, it goes it, there's a there's a person there's there's a person who writes citations and things like that for the city. Um, but I made a note here. It would be. Probably the right person would be for Ross or Ellie or someone to. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Ross. Um, good celebration. Rita, you might have to write it. <laughs> <laughs> I seem to remember something to do with something back way back then. I could probably find a copy of it. We could just copy that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That'd be I'll nice. Take anything from you? <clears throat> Sorry, I interrupted. No, I don't have anything. Thank you. All right. Uh, All right. Terry, I'm going to jump back in real quick because okay. I, I wanted to mention this. Um, I was contacted by the city's stormwater management engineer, Jasmine Wilding, about uh, sunny day flooding. Um, the email I got from her, I'll, I'll, for, I'll reply, reply all and forward to all of you. But um, the city, the, the wording is the city is applying for federal funds to study flooding east impacts in Eastport and potential uh, mitigation options. The first step is locating the areas of the sunny day flooding and they've set up a Google Doc, a Google Drive where you can submit pictures. So you're out walking your dog or you're driving downtown and you see a puddle that's been there for three and a half days or only one that's a full moon, you can submit the pictures and then they're going to use that as part of their grant application. So I'll make sure that everybody gets this. Um, it's been, I got it on 228. So it's, it's been close to a month. I've sent quite a few pictures because of the, <laughs> the, the tides yeah. lately and the winds. Um, but yeah, I, I think the more pictures we get in and, and the more information we supply them with, the better, so. Good, yeah, circulate that. Uh, you can send it uh, 
just hit the same reply to the email that I sent earlier today that's got everybody on it that are on the board and it doesn't have to go to uh, all the staff and everybody it'll just come to the board yeah um Beth anything else on your part I think so. all right uh with that is there a motion to adjourn I'll do it Debbie, Debbie got her hand up first. Is there a second? Duncan, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly.